Well, tensions, uh, switching to another story that we are closely watching here, tensions mounting in the Middle East. Israel's potential response to Iran launching hundreds of drones and missiles may be, quote, imminent. This is according to the latest reports out from NBC. Here with more, we want to bring in Cliff Kupchin. He is Eurasia Group's chairman here to discuss uh, the latest that we're seeing in Cliff. Uh, over the last 24 hours, there has been reports coming out that Israel's response is likely imminent. What do you think that response is going to look like? I think they're going to be careful, really careful. They're under a huge amount of pressure from the Biden administration not to trigger a big regional war, a big escalation. So I, I think they'll probably hit uh, Iranian allies in Syria align militias, uh, shoot one level down so that Iran isn't forced to shoot back and, and we get into an escalatory spiral. That, that's my best judgment. You know, what, what does this mean in terms of the relationship between the U.S. And, and Israel as well, Cliff? I mean, the U.S. and Israel is one thing, long story relationship, but then President Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu, that in itself has been a, a, a much hairier situation that they've had to navigate. Biden and Netanyahu just don't like each other to begin with. Secondly, they really disagree on Israel's approach to protecting Palestinian civilians. I think what we got, though, interestingly, is a real reset over the last, you know, since Saturday in U.S.-Israel relations. When Israel was so attacked, the U.S. came to their aid. And I think that the relationship is much better now than it was three days ago. Cliff, do you think Israel has to do something? Do they need to respond? Yeah, they absolutely got to respond. Why? They, 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 because it, it, so Iran changed the game with what they did. They reestablished deterrence on the Iranian side. They made it clear to the world, which is really kind of breathtaking, that, that they're willing to use military force on a large scale against Israel from Iran. And let's just all keep in mind, we got really lucky on Saturday that one of those 300 you know, projectiles, including a large number of ballistic missiles, didn't kill thousands of Israelis. We got really lucky. So Israel, I think, has got to shoot back to sort of trim down the, this this new Iranian bravado to send a response. You just can't keep doing that or, 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 or you run a big risk. Cliff, how slippery is this slope then to a real escalation and the fact that we could see a widening war uh, play out in the Middle East? It's a real risky time. The, we have this whole new dimension now of, of Israel-Iran tension. Overlapping that is Israel's real determination and desire to do something on the border with Lebanon, the so-called Northern Front, move Hezbollah back behind a river away from the front. And on top of that, you know, the fundamental cause of all this, the war in Gaza, I don't think is nearly over. I think it's gonna be with us most of this year. Israel is going to do Rafah, where there's, you know, four battalions of about 4,000 plus Hamas troops that can still fight. So we are on a, you know, a structurally escalatory path, which I think anybody in the markets on it just really smell the coffee and be aware of. Does this structurally escalatory path significantly change international trade and relations on that front and, and have broader impacts to certain GDP structures that we've become accustomed to as well, if you see certain trade partners decide to move away from doing business with certain countries? Well, there are two. I don't think there's going to be a big war in the Middle East. But if we say that there's a, what, 15%, 20%, 25%, bigger number, that we're, we're, we're playing with huge tail risks at this point. And I think any market participant is going to be very, very aware of those. If the Strait of Hormuz, if that key international waterway for oil comes into play, and it's on the verge of coming into play, then oil prices now are going to dwarf what, what we could potentially face. That's the first risk. The second risk is that shipping lanes from the Red Sea to, to you know, a number of straits around the world will come under more pressure. So, so there are a number of ways now that I think moving forward in 2024, uh, the Middle East is going to be a real source of interest and risk for, for markets. Cliff Kupchan, who is the Eurasia Group chairman, thank you so much thank for you. taking the time here with us today. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.